to go ahead and try and install the Creative Lab sound card here in the machine. Um, I've already installed the drivers for it and I disabled all the auto accept bot uh, part the executables on the configure system. When you're installing a sound card on the system, it's very resource hungry, uh, requiring you know various uh, DMAs and IRQs and base addresses and stuff like that. So what you want to do is put that in first, the sound card it is, uh, along with let's say your video card, and then later on then add in your network cards and so on and so forth. We already have the network card in there. We have a configuration disk for the network card as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the sound card back into the computer. We're going to run the network configuration disk first. We're going to save the settings. We're going to set the automatic configure. We're going to save the settings. We're now going to basically restart the PC. We're now going to go into the autoexec bat file and the uh, configure system file. We're going to re-enable all the things that I disabled. And then we're going to restart the machine again and see then if we have the sound card working. Um, one of the problems is the resources aren't available for the sound card. Um, it's given me a problem with one resource not being available. So uh, this is the next sort of um, evolution in solving that problem. The joys of using an older machine. A lot of these problems don't exist with Windows 95 because it basically overrides all that and does it all for you. But with DOS, uh, an old machine and Windows uh, you know, 3.1, 3.11, you have to do all this yourself. One of the things you can get for a jumpless version of the Creative Lab sound card is the plug and play driver for DOS, which also takes a lot of the headaches away for you. But uh, we're going to leave this card as default. Like I said, we're going to basically go into DOS, we're going to try and configure the network card and uh, see if a problem is solved with simply setting it to uh, uh, different settings. Um, okay, so let's try that now. Okay, you probably hear crackling in the background. That would be the sound card uh, with the cable plugged into it. So it could be a dirty contact or something like that. We, I won't worry about that too much at the moment. That's not really the problem. The problem is we're getting no sound. I did get General MIDI actually playing back uh, in the Duke Nukem setup program. I used that as a sort of a test. This machine won't run Duke Nukem, but it just it's a nice little thing just to see if its sound card is configured. And uh, I got basically nowhere, you know. So we're going to basically go ahead and configure the network card. This is actually the older version of the software, as far as I know, I have a, I have a newer version of the software on a different disc, but uh, it'll do the job, surely. The network card I actually I put in is slightly different as well. Uh, it's the same model of network card, um, but it only has uh, the Ethernet port on. It hasn't got the AUI or a Thinnet slash Ticknet con con uh, connection on. Okay, so base address. We're going to go all the configure here. Now you see there already, the interrupt request 5, that's one of the uh, base addresses of the parallel port, but also of the sound card. And the parallel port can use a 5 and also got the sound card. So we're going to basically do all the configure. Uh, and see it here, it says the NIC's IO base address, interrupt request level and transceiver type have been successfully selected with auto configure. Now for your new settings to take effect, save the settings. So it's now set to 300, 10, uh, and that's actually interesting, the 300 there, because we've just told the sound card to be at 300. Uh, so, uh, okay. Right then. Let's do run a test there, anyway, let's see what happens. So, uh, yeah, the cable is connected, so this should work. Uh, do a start on that. Oh, actually, we changed it. Do you remember? So I'm saying that's all losing that. my marbles here. There's a jumper I moved on the car to try and configure it. See the top here? We have 330. I'd set that to 300 because I thought something was clashing. Um, so I put the jumpers back to all the default settings on the card. And I basically went and I changed it there, as you saw at the start of the video, to uh, 330 from 300. So we're now going to go and see if the sound card works. So uh, we'll just get into the sound card directory. Okay, so we're here inside the Soundblaster 16 diagnostic software. I'll take a little bit of tea. Just give me a second. Just to show this is live and we're not uh, messing about. Um, okay, so here we have um, the diagnostic software from Crave Labs. And this should be... Hear that? Hope you hear that crackle. Um, I'm just going to do auto. Should be there, yeah. Auto. Should be at 330H. It is. Uh, IRQ5. We'll do auto scan again. Just to see. Yep, I found it. And then this one here then is giving me trouble.
It's just jamming up now. Let's see if it comes out of it. It's come out of it before. Still jammed. Well, as you can see there, there's your answer. As you can see there, there was three, there was three options. So look. The diagnostic utility has detected that none of the available low DMA channels can be used. Please ensure that other peripheral cars do not use the same DNA channel and run this utility again. Um, so the three channels that are free there, three channels that, 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 that basically you can use. Um, we have channel 0, channel 1 and channel 3. So channel 0 we can't use. Um, and we know we can't use it because that should be assigned to the system board itself. Uh, I've never actually seen that being used. I've only ever seen the likes of 1 and 3 being used. Um, number 1 should be allowed to be used um, because it'll only really be used for sound cards or for uh, SCSI host adapter cards. And we don't have a SCSI card installed, so that should be free. And the other one that's on the system there is number 3. And again, that should be free. Um, most sound cards can use 3 or again SCSI, uh, SCSI cards. Um, so it's not free. So uh, there's no setting to change it on the card. You can't, you know, force it into something else. There's nothing I can do. Um, I've tried absolutely everything. So there's obviously something on the. I reckon something on the motherboard itself is conflicting, and I want to choose channel three. That's actually where I want to go. So we we we'll, we'll basically ask it for that, because I figure that that'd be the best channel to be free, and still doesn't want so to do that. This is the sound card we chose to install into our AST computer. But uh, I came across a couple of uh, hiccups and issues with it. Um, I could choose uh, one of the DMA channels, uh, but I couldn't choose the low DMA channel. It wouldn't let me. Now, we're going to show you that later on, what, what I mean by that. Um, I tried to change the base address from the standard uh, to a non-standard address. Um, that didn't work. Um, so I don't know whether there's something over this card or whether there's something in the PC that's actually conflicting with the uh, you know DMA direct memory access request. So the IRQ we chose uh, was IRQ number five. Now, as you might have noticed in the uh, setup of the BIOS in uh, one of our previous videos on the AST, you notice that the uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a choice there between IRQ seven or IRQ five on that uh, LPT port. We don't need it, so I just basically disabled it. But uh, generally, leave it to five. So we're, the default setting is you want to leave them on the Creative Lab sound cards because some games don't like you changing uh, those default values. The other thing to do, as I mentioned already, is to make sure the machine is booting up with a minimal amount of peripherals installed. So no network card, just install it with a sound card and the video card, and then set up your RQ and DMA and all the rest of it. Once that's done, go ahead then and install your network card. The network card we installed is the 3Com network card. And the 3Com network card we have here is purely just uh, designed for the Ethernet cable. It's exactly the same driver as the last uh, car we showed you. Um, basically, I needed a car for something else, um, so I took it out and put this card in instead. It's a nice little car, it just has the Ethernet on it and nothing else. It's a more recent car than the other one. Um, but anyway, this card here I set to IRQ number 10. It's got a, a lovely little bit of flash memory, so when you want to set, uh, that's the flash memory there. If it isn't the flash memory, I'll eat my shorts. Yes, it is. There is there, see, 70. So basically, we, we basically tell the computer that that's RQ number uh, uh, 10, uh, and uh, 10 is generally not assigned to anything on the system. Generally, you have the RQ number 0, which is, the, which is set to the system timer. RQ1 is generally for the keyboard. Uh, number 2 is generally tied to the other RQs in the system of sort of 8 to 15. Uh, COM2 and COM1 are 3 and 4. Uh, LPT2, so if you have two printer ports, Generally, we save RQ5 for the sound card. RQ6 is generally designated, designated to the floppy disk controller. Uh, RQ number 7, again, LPT number 1. We're not using the LPT number 1, but we can if we need to. If we need to use that printer port, we can, because we have uh, set the sound card to use RQ number 5, so there shouldn't be any problem. Uh, the real time clock is at RQ number 8. Um, 9 is, can be substituted for RQ2, as far as I remember. 10 and 11 are not assigned, so generally number 10 we assign to the network card, although there are faster ports available. Um, but on a machine at this speed, uh, I don't think direct 
access to the CPU is going to really make much difference. Um, number 12 is, is designated to the PS2 mouse port. Again, we want to keep that open because we have a PS2 mouse port in this machine. And number 13, um, if we disable the maths code processor or the MPU, we can then start using RQ uh, number 13, but we don't want to do that, so we have to leave that free. And number 14 is for the hard drive, number 15 is for the second hard drive, and uh, that's basically uh, all you have on the system for RQs, that's all you have free. So, okay, what's the problems uh, with the RQs? What's the potential issues you can have? Well, if a system is set up with the wrong RQ, you can get, you know, all sorts of glitches. Here's actually an ESA card, just to make it, let's have a look at that, you know. This is an ESS card, sorry. Um, so, what's the problems you can have? Well, the RQ0, for example, is saved and reserved. That's served, served, saved and reserved for the system board's timing. Um, if there's a conflict there, there could be a problem with your motherboard. Uh, it's probably the best idea to have the motherboard looked at. Uh, see if there's any bulging caps or broken traces on the board. and um, That may be causing the trouble there. Uh, number one on the RQ is generally assigned to the keyboard. and It's never available to other analog cards. Uh, if there's a problem here, chances are again there's something on the system board. My suggestion there would probably be to go ahead and check the port uh, on the back of the keyboard. The, you know, like for example, there's a PS2 one. So basically, check those contacts aren't bent or touching off each other, uh, and clean them out with a bit of cleaner. Same as the AT keyboard. Here's a here's a, a nice AT keyboard, nice uh, crusty AT keyboard. Um, but again, uh, clean out the contacts on that. This board here actually. This, this actual keyboard here is giving me trouble with that AST computer as well. Um, sometimes the machine won't boot with that plugged in, so chances are it's a fault on the, on the actual keyboard, because uh, otherwise it should boot up, shouldn't it? We'll just throw that car back in there again, just to keep the video moving, you know? So, the next thing then is RQ number 3. That's generally assigned to the serial ports uh, COM2 and COM4. Uh, so, that really shouldn't be set to anything else. Actually I skipped one didn't I? RQ2 I skipped. So RQ2 is generally assigned to older uh, style EGA video cards. Um, so if you've got a, a, a problem there you may have a conflict between RQ9 as well because that RQ is used to communicate with the CPU and it really shouldn't be used. Um, you've got to be very careful with that. Um, what else we got then? Number four, yeah, RQ4. That is generally used for the serial ports uh, one and three. Uh, and just remember that, you know, in most cases, you know, IRQ ports can't be shared, those IRQ lines can't be shared. Um, especially where two things are trying to communicate at the one time. Windows 95 can, you know, sort of move around those resources, um, as far as I remember. Um, so it can, you know, it eliminates a lot of these problems. But unfortunately we're using DOS here, so you've got to be the person going in there and configuring these cards to work correctly with your, your chosen system. Let's get that other sound get back into the picture again. Um, so this is the one that's not working for us, okay? So this is actually the CT2230 and that's the CT2290. So uh, it's a, hmm, maybe it's a more recent car. That's an interesting one. Well, the way they work, it's not something that I know of offhand, but uh, uh, we look into that and find out. But like I said, we'll get that car going in another machine, so uh, we won't worry about it too much, you know? Um, what else we got to worry about there? IRQ5 and 7 really are the only other two we want to worry about. Uh, the IRQ5, like I said, is usually set to the secondary LPT port. We can use it for sound cards. Try use it for the sound card. And then finally the IRQ7. Um, that's generally assigned to the uh, first parallel port. Um, so again, 5 and 7 can be interchanged, you know, depending on you know, which sound card you want to use. But generally try to keep it to the default of 220 and uh, using the IRQ number uh, 5. So, uh, you know, that should, you know, allow you to, you know, not cause too much problems. So, the problem with the DMA channels, this is what the interesting bit is. So, I, I couldn't set DMA channels 0, 1 or 3. Uh, it wouldn't let me. Now, 0 is a problem because that's assigned to the internal uh, system board and you shouldn't be able to use it. Okay? It, the option is there. I don't know why, but I shouldn't be able to use it. DMA number one, uh, no specifics, uh, no, no no specific assignment, but that could be where it's assigned to something. This card here could have a fault in it, I don't know. It wouldn't let me assign DMA number one, uh, so I basically uh, had to abandon that. But generally you'd use that for the likes of uh, 
sound cards or SCSI simple computer system interface cards, SCSI cards uh, or the like. Uh, the other thing then is IRQ number two, uh, that's generally, uh, sorry, IRQ DMA number two, that's generally assigned to the uh, floppy drives, uh, diskette drives. Uh, number three again, which is a DMA channel, that's a free DMA channel, uh, it's not usually assigned to anything and it's usually free, shouldn't be any problem there. And again, it should be a common choice for the likes of sound cards, uh, network cards, and uh, SCSI host adapters. So there could be a conflict between this uh, network card and this sound card, but we used the other network card that you saw in the previous uh, AST videos in this system with this sound card, and we still couldn't do it. And like I said, this is now set totally different, so there shouldn't be any conflict between this and them sound cards. And this is a nice piece of automatic software as well. So. Uh, we'll show you that, don't worry. So when you run this, you can actually get it to automatically choose uh, all the settings uh, for you. So, you know, it basically would search the system and go, okay, that's in use, that's in use, that's in use, that's free. And it automatically configures it. It's a nice car. This would be uh, plug and play compatible. So that's what's great about it. It can be assigned internally. Um, so, you know, with this machine here, with this particular one here, you don't need to change the jumper to change the IRQ to number 10, for example. It's configured automatically within the chip, and the settings are saved within the flash chip of the actual board itself. So it means when it boots up, it'll automatically choose where it wants to be. And number, uh, DMA number 4, no specific assignment really for that one. Uh, and then you've got number 5 then, DMA channel. Again, that's generally used for the sound blaster sound cards. I hadn't any problem with that one. I could set it to 5 and the sound card worked fine with that. It was just that lower one I could not, could not set. Uh, and again, number six, and number seven, no specific assignment for, uh, you know, no, no, no sort of unique assignment uh, for number, number, number five, and number, number six, and number seven. So, uh, quick recap: uh, zero is internal system board, shouldn't be able to assign to that. Uh, so that's the, the system motherboard. Okay. Uh, number one uh, is used for. Uh, commonly used for sound cards, you know, these, you know, sound cards and that sort of stuff, and also for the SCSI type of uh, ad adapters. Uh, number two is generally assigned to the floppy drives. Uh, number three is generally a good choice for sound cards again, or SCSI, SCSI drives, or even network cards. Uh, number four, no specific assignment. Five, again, we use them for sound cards quite a bit. And number six, no specific assignment. And number seven, there's no assignment for that one either. So uh, let's move on and try and find out some other sort of pitfalls you might come across. The with most cards. common conflicts you're going to have between the sound card and some other system board is probably between this particular uh, system board and the likes of an Adaptex SCSI adapter. Um, the Sunbass 16 and a SCSI adapter. The reason being is because you generally get that conflict on DMA5 uh, as well as the I.O. ports of 330 to 331. Um, because that's where the MIDI chip sits. Uh, so rather than changing the settings here on the sound card, don't. Change them on the SCSI card where you can because the SCSI card doesn't really care where it sits um, whereas the sound card Again, doesn't really care where it sits, but a lot of software is looking for 220 DMA. You know what I mean? It's looking for those original settings. And if you go and change them, some of the older software will just refuse point blank to run your machine. So it's best to leave the, the settings on the sound card default and change the network card because that doesn't matter. And change the uh, SCSI drive, SCSI drive card. Change those two adapters rather than this. Leave this as the standard default settings where you possibly can. One of the problems I had with ESS audio drive was that exact thing. Uh, I originally had an ESS audio drive card. This isn't it. Um, I said the back, and I went ahead and purchased a Sound Blaster 16 sound card. This could be it, but I don't think so. Um, so basically, what happened was the port address uh, at 220 we really wanted to use. This one wanted 230, as far as I remember, and uh, it caused no end of trouble. So, although the ESS audio drive was cheaper, we had to send it back. We got a Crave Lab sound card, installed it in our AST16, and voila, the machine started to run and everything ran perfectly again. So, it is something you want to watch. The interesting thing is that the future holds. Um, if you had this car back in the day, the future would have held the fact that a lot of these jumper settings that are here will no longer would exist because plug and play was on the way, and plug and play cards like the network card we showed you. Um, eliminate the need to go configuring stuff yourself. It'll be automatic uh, in the operating system, for example, Windows 95. 
um, so you won't have to worry about it anymore. But uh, people who use MCA bus or the EISA systems would know all about plug and play. Um, you basically just plug it in, you program uh, in the BIOS uh, what the card is and it sets it all up for you. So you don't have to worry about DNA settings or all this sort of crack, you know. But uh, it was sort of a, a pipe dream for, for most common people when it came to the 16-bit sound card that was like this one here that wasn't exactly plug and play. As we said already, most of these cards will be already configured to use a set of addresses um, and a set of uh, IRQ numbers and base IO addresses and DMA channels that nothing else in the system already uses or that wouldn't be common for anything else to use. That way it should be just a matter of plug this board in, run the software and everything is relatively in the garden. That's not always the case. And, uh, you know what I mean, it's not, uh, <laughs> it doesn't always work out, you know, smelling of roses. Let's continue. Again, do the auto scan. Um, IRQ10 is in use by the uh, network card, so I won't pick that. Again, auto scan. We were trying to choose channel 3, remember? So it should actually run. Yep, yeah, there you are. Set the 3 successfully. And uh, this is now choosing the high one. So again, we can use uh, the auto scan. This will give us a high DMA channel. Yep, yeah, let us do that. So it's done all this, uh, and then we can do some uh, testing. You ready? So left channel. 8 bit testing. 8 bit testing. 8 bit testing. 16 bit testing. 16 bit testing. 16 bit testing. And then synthesize music. So that's what you want. Um, this basically means that our system now is configured correctly. Um, I don't need to update the system files, that's already been done. Um, so what we'll do next is we will uh, try to run uh, uh, some sound demos, not sound demos, so run some demos and that, that uh, require sound and see how the system functions. But for the moment, I hope this video on the Sound Blaster 16 sound card has been some sort of help to you. Um, if you just look at the top there, you'll see the default settings. So take note of them, and um, they can be very, very handy.